Hey friends, so today we're gonna learn how to work with the date and time in SQL. So we will start with the fundamentals, the concept of date and time, and then we're gonna do a deep dive into 13 different date and time functions in SQL, where we're gonna understand the syntax, how they work, and when to use them. So let's start with the first question, what is date and time in SQL? So what is a date? If you take a look at calendar and you pick any date, for example, August 20th, 2025, this date could represent an event like a birth date. <laughs> A project deadline at your work and mainly it has three components the first part is a four digit number indicating the year then the next component it is the month so normally we represent the month with a number between 1 and 12 and the last component is the day this is a number between 1 and 31 depending on the month now in database we call this structure of those three components a date so this is what we mean with dates in SQL all right so now let's move to the next one what is time time refers to a specific point within a day like for example we have 18 o'clock 55 minutes and 45 seconds so this structure has as well three components the first one we call it the hours it is as well a number between 0 and 23 indicating the hour of the day then the next one it is the minutes this is a number between 0 and 59 moving on to the last component we have the second this is again the same thing a number between 0 and 59 so now this structure with those three components we call it in databases and sql a time so this is what we mean with the time now to the last type if you go and combine both the date together with the time and you put them side by side you will get a new structure and a new name in the databases and we call it usually timestamp this name is used in many databases like oracle postgres and mysql but in the sql server we have another name for that we call it date time so again it's very simple the date time or timestamp has the date information together with the time information so here in this example we have six components from left to right and here we have like a hierarchy in this structure so we start with the highest which is the year then we have the month the day and then we continue to the hour minutes and seconds so those are the three different types about date and time informations in SQL we have the date alone or the time alone or together in the date time all right let's explore now the data that we have inside our database searching for date and time informations now let's go to the table orders and if you go and expand it you will find here two columns having the data type date so we have the order dates with the date and as well the shipping date with the data type date and if you check the last column the creation date this one is date time 2 so now let's go and query those informations in order to understand the structure i'm just going to select the order id the order date and the ship date and the creation time from sales orders and from is big so let's go and execute it now if you go and check both order date and ship date you can find that here we have only the structure or the informations about the date and we have nothing about the time so again here we have a year month and day and that's why they have the data type date now let's go and check the creation time not only we have the date information but as well we have that time information so it starts with the date information year month day and then we have hour minute and seconds and then we have fractions of the seconds milliseconds and so on so this is how the date time or timestamp looks like in databases and this is how the date looks like all right my friends now in sql i can say that we have three different sources in order to query the dates the first one is dates that are stored inside our database like we saw here in those columns like the order date shipping date creation time all those are columns that holds dates informations and they are stored inside our database so this is the first source of dates that we can get inside our queries let me just remove those stuff and let's stick with the creation time so let's just execute it so those are our date and time information stored inside our database the second type is a hard-coded date string that we can use inside our queries let me show you an example so now if we go to a new line i can go and define a date like this so 2025 august 20th so that in this string we have hard-coded a date that is static for all rows let me just call it hard 
code it and let's go and execute it now we can see in the output we're gonna get a static date for all rows so this is gonna be the same for all rows inside our table so this value is not stored inside our database this value i just added to our query and hard coded it so sometimes in queries we define our dates that's gonna be used maybe later in calculations and so on now the third source of getting dates inside our query is using the function get date get date is the first and the most important function that we use in sql it's gonna go and return the current date and time at the moment of executing the query so let's try that out i'm gonna go and get a new line so get date it's very simple it doesn't accept any values inside the function so it's gonna be empty so let's call it today all right let's go and execute it and of course we're gonna get different results because the get date now is the date and the time that i'm recording this video so currently it is july 18 2024 and i'm recording this around 20 pm so as you can see this is gonna be as well repeated for each row we're gonna get always the same value so again this depends on the execution of that query so during the tutorial you can learn a lot about the get date and we can use it in a lot of functions so those are the three different sources of getting data information inside your query either from a column inside our database or hard-coded using a string and the third one is using the get date in order to get the current date and time informations at the moment of the query execution. Nice, now we have a clear understanding what is date and time in SQL. The next question is how to manipulate those informations using SQL functions. Okay, now we have our date, August 20th. 2025. One of the things that we can do with the date is we can go and extract different parts of the date. For example, we are interested only on the year, so we can go and extract only the year part. Or if we are interested in the month, you can go and extract the month and you will get August. And of course, we can go and extract the day and we will get the 20. So this is the first thing that we can do. We can extract the parts of the dates. Now, another thing that we can do is we can go and change the date format. So instead of having like a small minus between those date parts, we can go and split them using slash. We can even start first with the month, August, then 20, the day, and then the year, but having only the short form of the year, 25. Or we can go and change the format where we say we don't need any special character, we just leave it as a space. So as you can see, we are changing and manipulating the format of the date. Another category or task, we can go and do date calculations. So we can go and take our date and add to it for example, three years. Or we can go and find the differences between two dates, like we are doing a subtraction or let's say a minus, and we will get, for example, 30 days. So we can go and add stuff, subtract stuff, or find differences between two dates. It's like we are doing calculations on the dates. Now to the last thing that we can do with this date is we can go and test this date or validate it, whether it is a real date that SQL understands. So we can put it on the test and to add the output, we're gonna get true or false or zero and one. So as you can see here we have different ways or let's say categories on how to manipulate our dates in SQL. Now we're gonna go and group up the different date and time functions under four categories. The first category and the most important one we have the part extraction and here we have around seven different functions that we can use in order to do this task. Another category we have the format and casting and here we have three different functions underneath this category we have the format, convert and cast. And then the third category we have the calculations of the dates we have two functions date add and date diff and the last category the validation we have here only one function called is date so as you can see we have a lot of scale functions we have 13 date and time functions that you're gonna cover in this tutorial and how to manipulate the date and time informations in SQL. And this is how we can group them into four different categories. Let's start now with the biggest category. We have the part extraction. We're gonna cover all those seven functions in details on how to extract parts. Alright friends, now we're gonna cover three very easy quick functions in SQL to extract the part of the dates. So they are very simple. The day function gonna return a day from a date. And in the same way, the month gonna return the month from a date. And guess what? The year gonna return a year from a date. Okay, so now in order to understand how they work, we have a date like this one, 2025, August 20th. Sometimes you are not interested in the whole date. You would like to get only a part from this date. So you go and use the function day in order to extract the two digits 
20. Now, in other scenario, you might be interested in the month information. So you would like to get those two digits, 0, 8. So we can use the function month in order to extract the month information in order to get the August. So 0, 8. And one more situation where you want to have only the year information. So you are interested in the four digits, 2025. So you can go and use the function year in order to extract it. So in the output, if you apply it, you will get 2025. So it's very simple. This is how those three functions work. All right, now let's check the syntax of those three functions. It's pretty easy. So we have it always like this, a keyword called day. This is the function name, and then it accepts only one parameter. It is the date. The same things for the others. We have a function called month, and it accepts as well only one parameter, the date, and as well for the year, the same thing. So the syntax is very straightforward. It accepts only one value, the date, and we have the function name like the name of the bar that we want to extract. All right, so now let's try out those functions. I will be working with the column creation time. So let's try, for example, extracting the year from the creation time using the year function. So it's going to be very simple. It's going to be year and then creation time like this. And let's call it year. That's it. Let's go and execute it. Now, as you can see, it's very simple. We have only one year, 2025 from the creation time. So with that, as you can see, we got a new column where we have only the year informations inside it. And this information comes from the creation date. So we have only 2025. Now let's go and do the same for the month. So we're going to have the same thing, month creation time. And let's call it month. So let's execute it. Now, as you can see in the output, we got as well the number of the month. So we have here January, February and March. And those information as well are extracted from the creation time. And the same thing using the day function. So let's go and use that. So creation time and we call it day. So now, as you can see in the output, we have the day part from the creation time. So here we have one, five, 10, and so on. And all those informations come from the creation time. So as you can see, those three functions are very simple and quick in order to extract parts from a date or date time. So what is date part? Date part gonna go and return specific part of the date as a number. All right, so now back to our example, we have learned how to extract the day, month, and year. But of course, now in a day, we have more informations that we could extract, not only those three. We could extract, for example, the week, right? The quarter. So all those informations are as well stored in this date. We cannot see it like as a value, but inside the SQL, you can extract the week and quarter. But we we don't have a function dedicated for those stuff because they are not commonly used like the year and month and day. But still, we can extract those information using the date part. For example, we can say date part and we can specify the part as a week. And with that, SQL can return for this example, 34. And maybe in other situation, you are interested in the quarter, right? So you can specify it like this, date part quarter. So we are interested in the part of quarter and in the output, you will get three. So this is exactly the power of the date part. You can go and extract way more parts that is available in these dates. And one more thing to notice about the date part, year, month, and day, all of them are always generating the output an integer, a number. So we have the for the quarter three, for the week 34, the day 20, 20, 25, and so on. So all of those informations are integer. So integer is the data type of the output of these functions. Okay, so let's have a look to the syntax of the date part. It starts with the function name, date parts, and it accepts two parameters. The first one is the part that we want to extract. So we want to define what do you want. We want the month, the day, the year and so on and the second parameter is the date itself so let's have an example we can say date parts and we would like to extract the month from the order dates so the part is the month and the order date is the date that we want to extract from so with that we are specifying the part as a month now in SQL there is another way on how to specify the parts we can go and use like an abbreviation of the month so if you specify instead of month instead of writing the whole thing you write mm you will get the same result so it's like abbreviation and shortcut in order to write scripts. But I rarely see that in the implementations. I always tend to write it completely like this month because it's more like standards if you are switching between different databases. So as you can see, it's very simple. You have to give SQL to things 
which part you want to extract and the date that you want to extract from. Okay, so now we're going to go and extract different parts from the creation time using the date part. Let's start, for example, by extracting the year again. So let's go and do that. Date parts. And then we have to specify which part we need. So we're going to write a year like this. And then the next one going to be the value. So it's going to be the creation time. So let's call it year and let's say date parts. Let's go and execute it. So now at the output, you can see we got as well again the years that is extracted from the creation time. So it's going to be identical to the year function. So there is no differences between them. Both of them are integer and it holds the year information. Now we can go and try different parts. For example, let's copy the whole thing and let's extract, for example, the month. So you can go over here and change it to month and let's rename it execute. So at the output, you see, we got as well the masses is identical as well to the function month and the same thing for the day. So we are just changing the parts and in the output, we are getting the parts. So here we have as well the days. It is identical to the day function. So, so far, we don't have something new from the date part because we have it already from the other functions. But now we're going to go and extract other parts that are not year, month and day. So, for example, let's go and get the hours. So we have the date part. And here as a part, you say hour and let's call it here as well hour. Let's go and execute it. Now you can see in the output, we have a new dedicated column that shows only the information from the hour. So we have here 12, 23 and so on. And those informations comes from the time. And the same thing, you can define minutes, seconds and so on. But now let's go and get something interesting like the quarter. So let's go and duplicate it. And instead of hour, let's get quarter. So this information, it's not displayed in the creation time, but SQL can go and extract it. So let's call it quarter and let's go and execute it. Now, as you can see in the output, we have one new field called quarter and inside it everywhere we have one because all those dates are in the range of the quarter one. So as you can see, this is amazing, of course, for reporting and analysis. Let's go and have something else like the weekday. So. We are over here, quarter, and let's call it weekday and rename as well this to weekday. So let's go and execute it. All right. So now let's go and get something else, like, for example, the week. So I just duplicate it over here instead of quarter. Let's write week. So I would like to get the week number. So let's go and execute it. So now on the output, as you can see, we got a dedicated field that show us the week number from the creation time. So we can see this date come from the week number one. Those two come from week number two and so on. So that's it. As you can see, guys, all those informations that you are getting from the date part are numbers. And now we can extract way more informations than only the year, month and day. And even if those informations are not displayed directly, in the field itself, like the quarter, weeks, and so on. All right, so now we have very similar function to the date part. We have the date name. So the only difference here is that it returns the name of the date part. All right, so now back to our example, we have learned we can extract different types of parts from one date, but we learned as well that all of them are numbers. How about we would like to extract the name of the month? So instead of eight, I would like to get the name of the month, like August. Or instead of the 20, I would like to get the day name. Like here in this example, it's be Wednesday. So in order to get the name of the parts, we have to use the function date name. So for example, if you use the function date name using the part month, you will not get eight in the output. You will get the full name of the month, August. So as you can see, we are getting a string, a full name. And as well, the same thing. If you use date name for the weekday, you will not get 20 like the day function. You will get the name of the day, Wednesday. And as well here, the output is string. So as you can see, it's very simple. We are are using the date name in order to get the name of the parts and the data type of the output here is a string it is not an integer so as you can see here we have different types of functions that all of them are doing the same job we are extracting 
starts from one date. Okay, so now by checking the data name syntax, it's gonna be identical to the date part. So we are just switching the function name. It needs from you to define the part and as well the date. The only difference here is that we are getting different data type at the output. So here we are getting a string instead of integer. All right, so now let's check the date name. It is very similar to the date part. So we're gonna have it like this. We're gonna work as well with the creation time. So we're going to say date name and then after that so we have to define the parts. So let's go for example with the month and our field is as usual the creation time and let's call it month date name like this. So that's it. Let's go and execute it. Now if you go to the output over here you can see we have the month but this time we don't have numbers. We have the full name of the month. So we have January, February, March instead of having one, two, three. So this is the big difference between the date name and date part. Date part you get numbers. Date name you get the name of the part. So let's do the same thing for the day. We would like to get the name of the day so i'm just duplicating it but now in order to get the full name of the day we cannot go with the day we're gonna go with the week day as a part so that's it i will call it week day so let's execute it now as you can see in the output we have here a new column called weekday and inside it we have the name of the day instead of a number. So here we have Wednesday, Sunday, Friday and so on. So the full name of the day. Go of course with the day. Let's go and try that out. So this is the day of the month and of course the day of the month has no name and SQL of course gonna return the numbers again so you can see 1, 5, 10, 20 and so on but still there is a difference between the day from the day name and the day from the date parts. In the date parts we are getting integers so if you store this information in a new table it's gonna be stored as an integer but in the day that you are getting from the date name it is a number but still it's gonna be stored as a string value so the data type of those numbers is a string and the data types of the day from the date part is an integer and the same thing can happen if you extract for example a year so you don't have like a full text of the year so let me just do it like this so if we say a year you will not get the name of the year, you're still getting the numbers, the digits. But the data type here is a string. So that's it. This is the difference between the date name and the date part. For the month and weekday, you will get the full name. For the other stuff, you will get numbers, but with the string data type. So the most important thing about the date name is to present easy to read and human readable informations to the users. So imagine you are building a report called sales by month and then you show to the user the months as numbers 1, 2, 3 and till 12. This is of course okay but it is way more nicer if you present those informations as a full text. So you go with the date name in order to show instead of one you show January, February, March and the full name of the month and this is gonna look way nicer in reporting for the users. So this is the core use case of the date name. So what is day trunk? Day trunk gonna go and truncate the date to a specific part. So let's understand what this means. Okay, now let's check the syntax of the date trunk. It's gonna be exactly the same like date part and date name. So you have to define the part and the date that you want to extract apart from it. So the only thing that is different here, we are giving different function name. So as you can see, all those three functions, like having the same structure, you have to provide which part you want to extract, like a month, day, week, hour, minutes, and so on, and the date or date and time that you want to extract a part from it. And of course, with the date trunk, we are getting at the output, date or date time. Okay, so now let's understand exactly how the date trunk works. We have the following date time, and as we learned, we have like a hierarchy where we start with the highest from the year then we move to the month day hours minutes and seconds and by looking to this information it is very precise we know exact second for this information right so the level of details here is very high we know the seconds of this event so now the day trunk gonna allow us to change this level of details of this information by specifying the level of details let's take for example if we say the day trunk minutes so we are saying we are interested only at the minutes level we are not interesting with the seconds so what can happen everything between the year 
and the minutes gonna be kept. That means all those information will not be changed, but only the seconds gonna be resetted. We are not interested anymore with the seconds. This is very detailed for us. So SQL gonna go and reset the seconds to zero, zero. So we are saying the minimum level is the minutes and we are not interested anything like before it, the seconds. Let's say now we say, you know what? The minutes is very detailed. I would like to be at the hours level. So we specify for the day trunk hour so here things changed we're gonna keep the informations now between the year and the hours and anything after that gonna be resetted so now minutes and seconds gonna be in the range of the resets and sql gonna go and reset the 55 to 00, zero. So now the level of details is a little bit lower. Now we know only the informations until the hours and we are not interested about the minutes and the seconds. And I think you already get it. If you say date trunk day, what's gonna happen is you're gonna keep everything between year and day and the whole time gonna be resets. So the hours, minutes and seconds, all those informations gonna reset to zero, zero. So now by looking to this, we don't know anything about the time. We know only informations about the dates and now we can go one more step and we say you know what i'm not interested about the days i'm doing analysis on the month level so what is here kept is only two informations year and month and everything below that the day and the time gonna be resetted but this time SQL will not reset the day to zero zero because there is no day called zero zero it starts always with the first date so it's gonna reset to zero one so the date parts and the dates gonna reset to zero one and the dates parts in the time gonna reset to zero zero so now we are at the level of the month now you can go to the last step and you say you know what i'm interested only in the years and i'm doing only analysis at this level at the highest level so you can go and say date trunk year and now what's gonna happen is girl gonna keep only the year and everything below that gonna be resetted so between month and the seconds everything gonna reset so here is girl gonna reset as well the august to zero one so the only value that is kept is the year and everything else is resetted. So this is the 1st of January and the time is completely resetted. So now we are at the lowest level of details. We know only information about the year and we don't care about any other parts. So as you can see, the date trunk here is not really extracting a part. Here, date trunk is like resetting stuff. So we are navigating through the hierarchy of the date and time and we are controlling at which level we are doing the analysis. So as you can see, at the end, it's not very complicated once you understand how it works and it is very useful in analysis so this is how the date trunk works in sql okay let's have a few examples about the date trunk together with the creation time so as you can see the creation time the level of it is the seconds so we have seconds information with the creation time now i would like to move it to the minutes so let's go and do this date trunk and we're gonna say let's truncate at the minutes level for the creation time so let's call it minute date trunk so let's go and execute it now if you go and check the output over here and compare it to the creation time you can see here we have zeros at the seconds so as you can see we have the seconds completely resetted compared to the creation time now let's say that i'm not interested in the time information inside the creation time i would like only to get the dates so in order to do that we can use the date trunk where we reset to the level of the day so let's go and duplicate it i'm gonna put it over here and instead of minutes let's say we have a day and let's go and check the output now if you go and check the result over here you can see all the time informations are resetted to zeros and we have here only information about the date so we have year month and day and everything else is resetted to zero now of course we can go to the maximum where we say i just need the year so i don't need anything else so let's try that out we're gonna take date trunk and say year year and let's call it year so let's go and execute it. Now, if you check the output over here, you can see that everything is resetted beside the year. So we have only the year information, but everything else is resetted to the 1st of January. And the time is as well is resetted. So as you can see, the output of the date trunk is always as a date time. And it helps us as well to navigate through the hierarchy of the date time and we can truncate at the level that we want. All right, so now we're gonna check why date trunk is amazing function for data analysis. So let's have this example. We are saying select creation 
time and we want to count the number of orders based on the creation time from our table sales orders and we can use the group by in order to group the data by the creation time so let's go and excuse it now as you can see we're gonna get one everywhere because the level of details the granularity of the creation time is very high and that's because here we have the seconds and since our data is small we will not get like two orders at the same seconds now in data analytics you would like quickly to aggregate the data at different granularity like for example at the month level so you can do that very quickly using the date trunk and you say, you know what, let's stay at the month and let's call it creation. And we're going to have the same thing for the group by. So let's go and execute it. So now, as you can see at the output, we have only three rows. We don't have like 10 rows. And that's because we have three months. So that means we just rolled up to the month level instead of the seconds. And we can see now in the month of January, we have four orders, February as well, four and March, we have only two. So now we are talking about different level of details in the output and granularity. And now you might say, let's go and aggregate the data at different level at the year level. So you can just change over here the year and execute it and with that now we are at the highest level of aggregations we are at the year level and since in our data we have only 2025 so we will get the total number of orders inside the table and that is 10 and this is really amazing in data analytics you can go and quickly change the granularity and the level of aggregation or details by simply defining the level inside the date so this is why the date trunk is amazing it allows us to do analyzes and aggregations by zooming in and zooming out Okay, so now we're going to talk about the last function in the part extraction category. We have the end of the month. As the name says, it's going to go and return the last day of a month. So let's see how end of month works. This is very simple. So let's take our date, 20th August 2025. If you go now and apply this function to it, what's going to happen? It's going to go and change only the day information. So instead of 20, it's going to go to the last day of the month. So it's going to go and change the 20 to 31 the last day of the month August in 2025 let's take another example is the 1st of February 2025 if you apply the end of the month it's gonna go and change the day from the 1st to 28 the last day of month February so as you can see it's very simple let's take another example where it is already the last day of the month so we have 31 of March if you apply the end of the month here what can happen nothing gonna happen you're gonna get and return the same value so this is how it works and as you can see always the output of the end of the month gonna be as well a date so this is how end of month work it is very simple all right now quickly about the syntax of the end of the month it's gonna have the exact same syntax like the day month year it accepts only one parameter it is the date so we have to pass here a date in order to find out the end of the month so let's go and find the end of the month of our creation time so end of the month like this and let's have our creation time so let's see the end of month let's go and execute it and now in the output you can see we have a new column a date column and inside it we have values about the end of the month so for example here we have january 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 and so on so you will see always here the end of january and the same thing for february and march so that's it this is really nice function in case you need the end of the month of each date maybe you're creating a report or analysis where you need this information and now you might ask me how about to get the first day of the month is there like any function for it well no but there is a trick in order to get the first day of the month using another function that we just learned. Think about it, how to get the days as one everywhere. So we have to get here the 1st of January, the 1st of February and the 1st of March. So how we can do that? Well, using the date trunk. So let me show you how we're going to do this. So date trunk and we're going to reset at the level of month. So we don't need the days, it's going to reset to the first. So our field is creation time and this is going to be the start of month. So let's go and execute it. So now as you can see in the output, we have the start of month and you can see we have everywhere here a one since we reset it at the level of month and this is going to give us the first day of the month. And now you might say, you know what, here we have a lot of zeros, how to get it exactly like the end of the month? And that's because the date trunk give us date and time always. So that means we have to change the data type and that we're going to learn later using the cast function, but we can go and do it right now. So we can say cast and we want to change the whole thing 
link to dates. And now with that, we change the data type from date time to date. And in the output, as you can see, we have only the date information. So now it's really amazing that you got two dates. The first one is the start of the month and the second is the end of the month. And those information might be helpful if you are generating reporting and you need the start and the end of the month. So now we come to the part where we ask the question, why do we need those parts? Why do we need to extract the date parts from a date? So let's have the following use cases. The first use case of extracting the part is doing data aggregations and reporting. Sometimes we are building like reports based on our data. And sometimes we have to aggregate our data by a specific time unit. Like for example, we are building a report in order to show the sales by year. So we have different years and we are aggregating the data based on the year or you want to drill down to more details where you want to aggregate the data by that quarter so in this report we are showing the sales by quarter q1 2 3 4 or you decide to go in more details where you show the report says sales by month and then you start aggregating your data by the month so you have january february march and so on so as you can see we can use those different parts in order to aggregate the data based on it and these different parts can offer us different analyzes with different details. So now we have the following task and it says how many orders were placed each year. So that means we have to group up our data by the year and we have to count the number of orders. Let's go and solve it. So let's go with the select. And now what do we need? We need the order date. This can indicate when the order is placed. So and we have to go and count the star. So this is going to be number of orders. And from our table, sales orders, and we have to group up by the order dates. So that's it. Let's go and execute it. So now in the outputs, we are getting the number of orders, but by the order date. So we are still not there. We have to have it as a year. So we don't need the whole date information. We need only the year information. So that means we have to go and extract the part year. In order to do that, we can do it like this. So we can go with the year. And we have it as well in the group by. So that's it. Let's go and execute it. And with that, as you can see, we got the number of orders for each year. And since in our data we have only 2025, we will get only one row. So with that, the task is solved. We are now aggregating the data on the level of the year. Now let's have another task, which is the same, but only different parts. How many orders were placed each month? So we have to go and change it to a month. It's very simple. We're going to use the function month and as well in the group by. So let's go and execute it. And now as you can see in the output, we don't have one row. Now we have three rows and that's because we have three months inside our data. And for each month, we will get the total number of orders. So for the January, we have four. February, we have four and March, we have two orders. Now you might say, you know what? I don't want the months as a numbers. I would like to have the full name of the month. So in order to do that, we're going to go and use the function date name. So let's go and use date name. And then we have to specify the date part. It's going to be the month and the value going to be the order date. And we have to have the same thing as well in the group by. So let's go and execute it. Now you can see in the output, we are getting the full name of the month, which is easier to read. So this is one of the use cases why we need to extract parts from a date in order to aggregate the data on a specific level. So now let's have the following task and it says show all orders that were placed during the month of February. So that means we don't need all the orders. We need only a subset of the orders based on the order dates. Now let's go and check the data. So select star first from sales orders and let's go and execute it. So now with us, we have our 10 orders. Now, if you check the order date over here, you can see that we have orders in January, February and March. Now we are interested only on the orders that were placed in February. So only this subset. So that means we have now to filter the data based on the month information. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a where clause. And now we don't need the whole order date. We need only the part month. So we're going to go with the month and order date and this is going to be equal to two since the output going to be in number so let's go and execute it now as you can see sql did filter the data and in the output we have only the orders were placed in the month of february so this is as well very common use case why do we need the parts 
we use it in order to filter the data based on specific part of the dates. So as you can see, it's very quick and easy. And here my recommendation is that if you are filtering the data, always use the numbers. So always use a date function that gives you a number because it's always faster to search for integers instead of searching for a character or for a string. So don't use the date name function in order to search or filter for the data. It's better to use the date part or month, year and day. Since you can work with numbers, and numbers are always faster to retrieve data and to filter your informations. Okay, so now we have a lot of functions. I, I would like now to do a quick recap about the data type of their results. So as we learned, we have functions like day, month, year, date part, and the output of all those functions is going to be integer. It's going to be a number. Now we have another function, the date time. If you use it, the output of this function is going to be a string because here we are extracting the name of the date part. And if you go and use the date trunk, you will get in the output always date time two so you are getting both the date and time and the last function that we learned end of month if you use it in the results you will get the data type dates so this is really important to understand the data type of the output so that you don't get any unexpected results all right so now you might say you know what those are a lot of functions and like i'm saying they are doing the same stuff we are extracting the parts of the dates so now you might ask me how do you decide on when to use which function this is how i usually do it first i ask myself which part I want to extract. If I want to extract a date or a month, then I ask the question, do I need it as an integer, as a number? If it's yes, then I go and use the day function or the month function because they are quick and I will get exactly what I need. But now if I need the full name of the month or the day, then I go with the function date name. Now moving back, if I'm interested on the part year, so here we don't have a year name or something, I'm going to go immediately with the function year. But now let's say that's I don't need the day, month, or year. I'm interested in other parts, like the week, the quarter, and so on. Only for this scenario, I go with the function date part. So this is my decision process. This is how I decide when to use which SQL function in order to extract the parts of the dates. All right, so now I have prepared for you here a list of all parts that we can use inside those three functions, date part, date name, and date trunk. And you can see in this table the different outputs using those different three functions. So for example, if you go and use the month with the date part, you will get eight, but for the date name, you will get August. And for the date trunk, you will get truncated date time at the level of the month where you reset the days and times. So this is a full list of all examples. You can go and check it. And one more thing that I have prepared for you in order to practice with all those different parts, I have made one big query with all different parts. So if you go and download the queries of this chapter, you will find the following files. And let's go now and open all date parts. So we're going to go inside it and here we have a long query so what we're going to do we're going to select everything and copy it and let's go back to our scale and paste it so let me just zoom out and then let's go and execute the whole thing so now in my code i have just done a union for each possible part for example for the year we have date part date name and date trunk and i'm using currently the get date so we are manipulating this one and then the output can be presented over here so you can see it like this so if you use the part year for the date name you will get 2024 the same thing for the date name and this is for the date trunk and with that you have all possible parts that you can use in sql in one query so with that you can learn what are the outputs for different parts all right so with that we have learned all those functions on how to extract the parts of dates all right moving to the second category we're going to learn how to do formatting and casting for the date informations in sql using three functions if you like this video and you want me to create more content like this i'm gonna really appreciate it if you support the channel by subscribing liking sharing commenting all those stuff gonna help the channel with the youtube algorithm and as well my content gonna reach the others so thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial bye